G'day, I'm Patrick from Douglas Fur Design. Welcome to the Router Bits. Butterfly joins are a relatively common way of joining two pieces of wood in a really decorative way. And um, they're also used for uh, protecting cracks in, in big live edge slabs and big slabs of timber that might have a, uh, a split that you want to protect. This router bit is a butterfly key spline bit. It actually allows you to cut those keys really simply and with a lot of repeatability. So you can do quite a few at one time and then apply exactly the same butterfly a number of times in the piece in a few different ways. And I'll go through a couple of ways that you can use these. So the first application that I want to show you is when you might use a butterfly to join two pieces of flat stock in a decorative way with a, a visual butterfly. And so I've just drawn one on in grey lead just to demonstrate what I'm going to be doing. And there's two parts to what we're trying to do here. The first bit is to be essentially cut these little dovetails in both pieces and then create a butterfly that's exactly the same size that can slide inside to those dovetails. So first of all I'm going to create those dovetails. You need to make sure that your dovetail bit is the exact same angle as your butterfly key spline bit, which is 14 degrees. Uh, and you can use this to create different size butterflies. But I'm going to create a, uh, a dovetail which is 19mm across at its widest point so that I can use some 19mm stock to also create the butterfly. So I'm going to start by cutting my dovetails as I described before. Um, I've placed a dovetail bit into the router and it has a 14 millimeter angle. It also, the tip of it is exactly 19 mil across which is going to correspond with the little uh, butterfly that I'm going to create. I've set the height at about 14 millimeters. That's arbitrary, you can have it longer if you want but I feel like that's a, a good length to have uh, of dovetail in both sides of my timber. So I've set that height with just a piece of 14 mil stock that I have. We've created our dovetails and they're nice and clean. There wasn't any tear out because we were able to protect those faces. And we're going to use the exact size of this to determine how big we need our butterfly to be. Because each of those dovetails was 14 mils deep, the entire, um, the entire butterfly needs to be uh, 28 mils long. The widest part of the butterfly needs to be 19 mil because that was the exact size of the bit that we were using and the narrowest part of this dovetail needs to be 12 mil. So we can use those measurements to set our placement and our fence of uh, this butterfly spline bit now. Because we know our dovetails are 14 mils deep, because we use this piece of 14 mil stock to set them, we can use this same piece of timber to line up with the center of this butterfly key spline bit to make sure that the apex of the bit is exactly at 14 mil and that'll make sure that that butterfly sits exactly in that um, dovetail that we've created. So that's perfect. I've locked that off. What we need to do now is set the depth of the fence and the idea with this is to make sure that the top and the bottom of that butterfly key spline bit is actually just exactly in line with the fence at the point where our 28 mil butterfly, because that's 14 plus 14, is in contact with the bit. So the best way to do that is you use two pieces of our 14 mil stock, put them on top of each other, sit it next to the fence, put a little ruler across like that, and just bring our fence forward and back until that router bit can travel freely, but is just just barely, so it should nearly be touching. And that's perfect, so we'll give it a shot now. So, 
I've set the height and the depth of the router bit in the table and this is the piece of stock I'm going to cut my butterflies out of. You'll notice that it's actually a long strip of end grain, like the grain is going this way, not longitudinally. And the reason that is, is because my little butterflies are actually going to be, they're going to look like that, they're going to be cut in that sort of shape. And I'm going to have essentially a long strip of butterflies, which I'll then cut into the depth that I need, and I'll have tons of them. I need the grain going this way, because that is the direction that the force is going to be applied to that butterfly to stop these pieces of timber that I'm trying to join from spreading. If the butterfly was going, say, this direction, that is a very easy way to split timber uh, if it's against the grain like that and it actually wouldn't be applying any strength at all to that joint. So that's the reason that I've done that. I've cut this piece to exactly 28 mil thick, it's actually 28.05, which is just slightly smaller than our little butterfly hole, which is about 28.1. So there's 0.05 of a mil difference and hopefully that'll just slide in perfectly. Uh, and I'm gonna try and do this now. We'll, we'll do uh, one pass with our router bit first, and then we'll flip it over and do another pass on the other side and that should create our butterfly. All right, so I ran this through on both sides and it came out exactly like I wanted, more or less, except I can see when I look closely that there's still a piece of uh, flat material on both sides just near the edge. And what that means is that my uh, grooves for the butterflies haven't gone quite deep enough. And I can confirm that by measuring the uh, narrowest section, which should be 12 mil or a fraction less. And it's actually, um, between uh, 13 on this side and a little bit over 13 on this side. So I'm going to move the fence in by about half a mil and run this through again. It's better to creep up on these things than uh, overshoot it and then we're going to have to cut a whole new piece. Another way to double check this is if you've clamped these together, if you're able to do that, uh, the Width-wise, I can put a corner of this in and it slides in snugly, just perfectly. But I can tell that though the rest of the profile won't fit in there. Okay, and I'll flip that around to the other side. So I had to run this through a couple more times, taking off just a fraction each time, and it finally is the perfect size. What I did to make sure I was only taking off a fraction is I leave one side of my fence locked down, and then I move the far side by only about, oh, probably less than a millimeter. And because that's a long arm, the center where the actual router bit is, is only gonna move about half of that. And so I can take off uh, a quarter or even a, you know, less than that of a millimeter each time. Uh, so now, when I measure it, it is exactly the right size and it fits tightly, but wonderfully, right into that hole, which is exactly what I wanted. So, what I need to do now, if I can get it out, is cut these into 19 mil chunks, because each one of them is my butterfly. I'd prefer them to be a little bit oversized than under, because I can always sand off the top. Uh, so I'll just probably do that on um, on the drop saw, but you could do it by hand if you want. I, uh, I'm just going to cut a few of those. All right, so I've just cut a few. Uh, they're all just a fraction over 19 mil thick. You can see wonderful little butterflies, very clean. So, now all we need to do is to fit one into our dovetail and it just slides in beautifully. Um, and it actually really holds those two pieces together. If you had a few, 
it would be a very, very firm fit. So, as I mentioned earlier, another really good application of these butterflies and this butterfly uh, bit is to use them as a way of stabilizing large, beautiful slabs like this that might have a crack. And you want to keep it that way and you just don't want it to spread any further. So what you do is you'd make your butterflies first. You can make them out of whatever material you like. You can make them larger than this, uh, whatever suits your piece. Place them where you want them on the crack. And then you would trace out that outline. Now normally you would do this with a marking knife or something super accurate for demonstration. I'm just gonna do it with a pencil so you can see it. Then what happens is you use that outline to chisel out this recess that will perfectly fit the butterfly that you've created. Now probably the easiest way to do this would be to choose a drill bit that you can take out most of that material without going too close to those lines because you want to keep those lines perfectly preserved. And then you would use a nice sharp chisel to really delicately cut away all of that material bit by bit until it was deep enough to fit your butterfly. And then once that is glued in and it's nice and tight, it's just gonna solidify and stabilize that piece. It's gonna prevent any further splitting or any movement that otherwise might happen through uh, humidity or moisture or different temperatures and all the other things that make wood move in ways you don't want them to. So that's a really good application of these as well. And it's a simple way with this butterfly key spline bit to make a bunch of these that match perfectly in one go. So as you can see, pretty handy little bit, um, great natural companion to these dovetail bits and a really nice simple way of making a lot of little butterflies that are really neat and you don't have to cut them by hand, which can be time consuming. Uh, and I'm also not very accurate at it, so this really helps. Um, so you can grab this Torcata butterfly key spline bit from Timbercon uh, on their website at timbercon.com.au or at either of their stores in Perth and in Melbourne.